Welcome to the first video in our genetics video series. Today's topic is what is DNA? After watching this video you should be able to do three things. You should be able to describe the structure of DNA, so what it looks like, the function of DNA, what it does, and also you should be able to make a complementary base strand of DNA. As the video goes for today, you also want to follow along with the reading called What is DNA? If you follow along with the reading, you'll be able to see some of the images uh, that we're showing in the video. You'll also be able to take notes on the side. Uh, we're going to go right through the reading, so following along will be really helpful. So the main topic that we're going to be talking about is genetics. Genetics has to do with who you are as a person meaning the traits that you have inside of your body. So the best place to start then is when you started. When you were first conceived, meaning when your sperm and egg first fused, is when your DNA first formed. So what happens is we have a little sperm meets an egg. Now when this happens, something really important occurs. The sperm is carrying half of your dad's DNA, represented by this little red slash right there. In fact, that's the only purpose of the sperm is to carry DNA. Now once the sperm fuses with the egg from your mom, that DNA is actually released inside of the egg. Now once inside of the egg, it actually matches up with another set of DNA, but this set of DNA is actually from your mom. So your dad donates half of his DNA through the sperm, and your mom has half of her DNA inside of her egg. And what that leaves you with, if you have half the DNA from one parent and half the DNA from the other parent, that leaves you with a whole set of DNA. That's half your mom and half your dad. Now this is the first time that you really start to exist. All right. What we have here is a combination of all of your DNA that will eventually make you. So right here, we actually have all of the DNA that will someday be you. All, right, all of the information that is ever needed to make every trait about you is stored in that one little spot. Now when we talk about genes, what we're really referring to are things called chromosomes. So inside of this area right here, these two red lines, these two red lines are kind of a simplified version of what your chromosomes actually look like. In reality, your chromosomes look like this. All right, Chromosomes kind of look like weird sticks. All right, they're sticks of actually genetic material. And if you were to count them up, you'd see that you actually have 23 pairs. All right, so here's one pair of them right there. Here's another pair of them right there. And so on and so forth all the way through. The one weird one that you'll notice is this down here. All right, that is actually a pair of chromosomes. That's your 23rd pair of chromosomes. And what that refers to is uh, your gender. All right, if you have an X chromosome and an X chromosome, you would be female, where in this case we have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, so this person here would actually be male. Now as you start to take a look through these, what you notice is that this chromosome and this chromosome look very similar to one another. All right, and this chromosome and this chromosome look really similar to one another. Now the reason behind that is because they are almost exactly the same. All right. In each pair, every chromosome is almost exactly the same. Now the reason behind this is because your the DNA between people is actually not that different. And so what happens is that in every pair, one of your chromosomes comes from your dad, whereas the other chromosome is donated from your mom. Now you combine those both together and you get a pair. So in every single one of these pairs, one of them always came from your dad whereas the other side always comes from your mom. All right, and in that way, what you get is you actually get your DNA to be a perfect 50-50 split between your mom's DNA and your dad's DNA. Now, the thing is, we talked about them looking similar before, and the reason behind that is because they are really similar. All right, DNA in general between people is actually about 98% the same. It's only a few little differences that really make up 
the individual traits that make you a, a unique, beautiful snowflake. So now when we start to take a look at these chromosomes, we do need to investigate a little bit further as to what they're actually like. All right, your chromosomes, so we start off here with you. All right, inside each one of your cells, as we studied before in our cell unit, is a nucleus. And now we also learned before that inside of that nucleus is where all your DNA is stored. When we refer to DNA, what we're actually referring to are these chromosomes, because each one of these chromosomes is a whole long strand of DNA that's wound up. All right, just like you could take thread and wind it up really tight on a spool, that's what these chromosomes are. It's just long, long, long strands of DNA that are wound up around spools. And in this case, these spools are called histones. Now, if we start with you again, we, and we take a look inside of your cells, we get our DNA there. All right, but each of these little sticks is actually representing one chromosome. You can see down here that this chromosome is actually very colorful. All right, your chromosomes don't actually have this kind of color to them. That's just there for, I don't know, to make the picture prettier. Now, if you were to take this chromosome and kind of unwind it and follow along, what you'll see is that you could actually unwind it just like you could unwind thread from a spool. And when you unwind it, what you'd be left with is DNA. All right, now when we talk about DNA, what we're actually referring to is a substance called deoxyribonucleic acid. All right, deoxyribo is where the D comes from. The nucleic is where the N comes from. And the acid is where the A comes from. DNA, deoxyribo nucleic acid. Now this DNA is actually what controls every physical trait that you have in your body. All right, that's controlled by genetics. So everything from your eye color to how fast your uh, toenails grow is controlled by the inside of your DNA. Now how does this actually work? Like, how is it possible that a chain like this, or here's another fun picture of DNA, you can see all the molecules kind of bound together here. How is it possible that this chain could control everything that you have inside of your body? And really, the secret has to do with these letters right here. All right, These letters right here are what are known as nucleic acids. So there's some on the other side, too. All right, Nucleic acids, there's four of them. Now, commonly, you'll hear them referred to, and we'll, this is how we'll talk about them for pretty much the rest of the unit, by their first letter. All right, but... Keep in mind that it is a whole molecule. So adenine is usually referred to as A. Thymine is referred to as T. Guanine is referred to as G. And cytosine is referred to as C. Now the order in which those nucleic acids are in, in a sequence of DNA, is actually what controls what that DNA says. It's like a secret code. All right, you'll notice in this case, the order goes T, then there's an A, and then we can't really see what's in here, but then there's a then there's a G, then a T, then an A, and then there's some more kind of hidden ones in there around the spool, then a G, then a T, then an A, then a C, then a T, then an A. As we start to take a look at those, it's that ordering of the letters that actually makes things um, what's called coded for inside of our body. Now these codes, and we actually, you'll often see them kind of written out just in letter form, like A, T, A, C, I'm sorry, G, C, C, uh, C, T, and you can go on and on and on and on forever. All right, that code of letters is what codes for what are called proteins inside of your body. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more in later videos as to how that actually works, but for now it's just good to know that these letters are eventually going to code for proteins. And so as we start to take a look through how this letter sequence actually works, we need to kind of remember that you are a significant number of traits. All right, from this single code, you actually can make roughly 20,000 different traits, meaning that your individual letter sequence, which is roughly 6 billion letters long, so obviously when we start taking a, a look at this code right here, a, T, G, C, T, A, T, T, C. So this is nine letters of code. Your entire body actually has about six billion letters.
system that make up the entire code. Now, of those 6 billion letters, those 6 billion letters actually code for about 20,000 different traits. All right, but it's those individual sequence of the letters that really makes all the difference. And so every time these letters code for a different protein or a different trait, we call those a one single gene. All right, and since you have about 20,000 different traits that the, that the code codes for, you have about 20,000 genes in your body. All right, so each individual gene is what codes for kind of a different trait. So now, one thing you'll notice about DNA is that it looks a little funny. It's got kind of this twisted shape to it. All right, this twisted shape is what is known as the double helix. All right, the double helix structure here is this kind of like twisted shape where it wraps and it wraps and it wraps and it wraps and then it wraps and it wraps and it wraps around. All right, you get kind of this weird twisty double twisted shape and then there's kind of little connectors in between it. All right, now this double helix shape is actually going to become really important for DNA later on and we'll talk about why. But the reason that it happens is because you actually have two different codes set up here. There's a code that connects to this side and there's a code that connects to this side. You'll notice that if you look at your letters on the way down, there's a letter here and a letter here and they're different from one another. All right, so the letter sequence that you get on one side of the DNA is actually different than the letter sequence you get on the other. All right, so if we take a look back at this model over here on this side, we might have an adenine, then a thymine, then a guanine, then a cytosine, and we'll say another cytosine, and I'm just making up this code as we go along. On the opposite side, connected to it, we actually would get a different code attached to the other strand. Now, there's something really special about this code, and as you go through... If you've done the reading, you've already have seen this, or if you kind of just recognize the pattern, what you'll notice is something really interesting. In that whenever you have an adenine on one side, on the other side of the code, you'll always have a thymine. And whenever you have a thymine, a thymine on the other side is always paired with an adenine. All right, then on the other, also, if you ever have a guanine, on the other side, there's always a cytosine. And whenever there's a cytosine, there's always a guanine. All right, now this is true all the time. You'll notice that these two strands are then almost exactly the same, but they're almost mirror images of each other. All right, now these are what are called complementary strands. And the reason behind this is that the order of letters is incredibly important. So if you have a mistake at some point, so if at some point somehow due to some sort of damage, all right, this letter were to change to a C, that got to stop choosing C's. This letter were to change to a G. That would incredibly disrupt what code that gene had made. And so instead of maybe this code um, coding for the, a correct form of, let's say, lactose, so the thing that allows you to break down dairy, instead that code would have a broken form of lactose, and so you wouldn't be able to digest dairy, and you'd be what's called lactose intolerant. All right, so one little letter is able to one little letter difference actually makes a huge difference in what it codes for all right so the nice thing about having two strands of dna like this is if this letter were to get messed up and turned into a g you'd still have this t over here on the other side and what would happen is they wouldn't bind anymore all right because g's don't stick with t's and so your dna would say whoa 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 that's not right and what it would do is it would take that G and actually switch it back into an A. And so what it does, it actually acts like, a, like almost like a spell check by having a second copy on the other side to make sure that it's right. So now to uh, give you an example, again, of why this is important, there's another one in the reading about eye color. So the gene for eye color, so how we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters here, the gene for brown eye color is actually... 350,000 letters long. All right, that's the one gene for the one trait of brown eyes. Now, if just six of those letters were to change, all of a sudden you have blue eyes. So what that just shows you is that making sure that this is correct is a really big deal. All right, so you could go through now and you could also sort of make some complementary strands what the other side would look like. So in this case, if this were, if the first strand were A, T, G, 
what we could do is we could figure out, well, A always binds with thymine, thymine always binds with adenine, guanine always binds with cytosine. Same thing if we go to the next one, CTA, cytosine always binds with guanine, thymine always binds with adenine, and adenine always binds with thymine. And this last one, TTC, thymine always binds with adenine, thymine always binds with adenine, and cytosine always binds with guanine. And there you go. What you did was you took your original strand of DNA here and actually made a complementary strand here. All right, let's see if we can do it again. In this case, we have A, C, G, an adenine, a cytosine, and a guanine. So adenine always pairs with thymine, so we'd put a T here. Cytosine always pairs with guanine, we put a G there. And guanine always pairs with cytosine, we put a C there. Thymine always pairs with adenine. Adenine always pairs with thymine. Guanine always pairs with cytosine. Cytosine always pairs with guanine. Cytosine always pairs with guanine. And thymine always pairs with adenine. And we have our original strand here, and here's our complementary strand right there. All right, now one thing that you'll notice is that we always put spaces every three letters. This is for a really important reason that we'll get to a little bit later in the translation video. Um, for now, it's just a really good way to organize yourself to make sure that you're kind of staying on top of the letters because it's really easy to skip one. And if you're, you know, making a complementary strand of a gene that's 3,000 letters long or like eye color, 350,000 letters long, then it's really easy to make one mistake if you don't have these nice kind of breaks right here, which allow you to see three genes at a time. All right, now I want you to practice some of these on your own. All right, so you can do this in your head or you can write it down on a piece of paper. All right. These are actually the sequences that are found in question four of the quiz prep questions on the paper that you have with you. All right, so what I first want you to figure out, if you had an adenine, an adenine, and a thymine, what would be the complementary three-letter code? That would be thymine, thymine, adenine. All right, now do the same thing with cytosine, adenine, guanine. What would be the complementary code there? Guanine, thymine, cytosine. Thymine, adenine, cytosine. T pairs with A, A pairs with T, C pairs with G. And then cytosine, thymine, thymine. That would be guanine, adenine, adenine. All right. If you can do that, great. If you can't do that yet, get a little more practice with the next ones. All right. Now try this next one all on your own. And I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to work on this. This sequence right here, you want to make a complementary strand for all three of these right here. All right, take about 30 seconds right now. All right, so we have cytosine, thymine, guanine, 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 guanine. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, cytosine. All right, did you get it? Great. All right, now do the last one on your own. This whole sequence right here. All right, write out the complementary strand for this DNA sequence right here. All right, so hopefully what you got was adenine, cytosine, guanine, cytosine, guanine, thymine, adenine, guanine, guanine, thymine, thymine, thymine. All right, perfect. So now you can do a couple of things. Now you can describe why we have DNA, so what the purpose of it, how it codes for proteins through our genes where it came from, so it came from both of our parents. One important thing to remember is that the, the 
each parent only gives you half of their DNA. But which half they choose from, because you have to remember that your parents also have chromosomes that look like this. So in every single sperm, dad could either give this one or he could give this one. All right, or in every egg, mom could give this one or this one. All right, she always has to give and he always has to give one of the two, but which one they choose or which one is actually randomly chosen. All right, so that means that every single sperm is pretty much unique. And now the great thing about that, that that means that every person's DNA, except for identical twins, is a little bit different. Even brothers and sisters are a little bit different because maybe for one, for one child, mom gave this one. But for her second child, mom gave this one. All right, and what it causes is this great, amazing diversity between people. Even if they're the same, even if they're in the same family, their DNA is even a little bit different, except for identical twins. So hopefully by now you can then talk about why we have DNA, where our DNA comes from, what DNA looks like, and also how to make a complementary strand. All right. We also talked about why those complementary strands are important so that your DNA can fix any changes. So where one letter were to change into another letter, like we talked about this A becoming a G, all right, that would be what's called a mutation. And in most cases, those are not good, and your, your body can fix it because of complementary strands. I hope you've enjoyed the first video in our video series. Good luck on the quiz.